Welcome, welcome to Coffee with the Port St. Lucie Council. I am Teresa Aronson from the St. Lucie County Chamber of Commerce. It's our pleasure, our honor to facilitate this event every single month. We do it on the third Tuesday, uh, right here at the Community Center on Arosa Boulevard. It is free, open to the public, which came out generously today. It's a big crowd here today. It's a very big crowd today. I think it's standing room only now today. Um, but we also, we throw in coffee and Danish from Steamworks um, uh, Coffee Bar. Right, Michael? It's only been, what, three years? Did she get the name right? I just want to clarify. Okay. I did. Good job. Thank you. Later, I'll do the um, five priorities. There you go. Couldn't think of that word either, though, so I don't like my chances. But anyway, we are going to be visiting with actually the, the mayor of this beautiful city today, Mayor Shannon Martin, in just a few minutes. But I'm going to start with my um, regular co-host and sponsor, and that is the Children's Services Council of St. Lucie County. Welcome, Thank Sean Boyle. Thank you for having us. My pickleball um, partner and yeah, we got to give the mayor and the city uh, lots of credit for our pickleball adventures here because we play at the city courts all the time. We do play at the city courts. It's um, it, we love it though too. It you can get pickup games. Sean will play with me for about forty-five minutes and then he's like, I need to move on to somebody better. That may be true. I know. <laughs> <laughs> you know I don't lie. I always speak the truth. He's like, I'll give you a 40. I'm like, that's fine. I'm tired after 45 minutes anyway. But we are excited about the pickleball courts, and we've got some more coming in to tradition. I know that that's something that the mayor is very um, passionate about because I think she, she gets calls about pickleball courts and access to them on a regular basis. So, yeah. I, not that she plays, but she wants to provide the pickleballing for all of her residents. So um, let's talk about the Children's Services Council for a moment. Sure. And what is it that the Children's Services Council does? I was going to ask you, do you want to tell everybody our five priorities? There's our, five. Mission, our mission is to improve the quality of life for all children in St. Louis County. It is. Big emphasis on the word all. And I want to say that there's not a Children's Services Council in all communities. We are very lucky and fortunate to have one here. And it was brought here by the public. The public voted it in. The public voted to, to keep it going. And um, the public is, is reaping the benefits of everything Every you do. county can have, there's 67 counties in Florida. Every county can establish a Children's Services Council. But do you know how many there actually are in Florida? I don't know. And they only exist in Florida. Oh, really? It's a, okay, very good. No, I don't know how many. You want to guess? No. Okay. Who? In 67, what, who's guessing? 10? Yeah, 10. Who said that? Oh, well very done, nice. Well done. There's only 10, so we are kind of on the on the forefront of that. But really, it is it is here to fund programs that ensure that every baby is a healthy baby. Yep. We are stopping child abuse before it happens. Absolutely. We're keeping kids in school. Yep. We're keeping kids off the streets, and we're keeping kids off the drugs and other risky behaviors. There you go. I got them well all five. Done. Well done. I couldn't think of the word priorities. I'm not saying we hang out a lot together, but we hang out a lot together. Yeah, we do. We do. I think people do know that, though, probably. So we see each other quite a bit. But we don't typically talk about the five priorities unless we're doing something like this, but it's been a lot of years. I make her say the five priorities before we play yep. pickleball. <laughs> it's our mantra. <laughs> <laughs> before we pickle, we priority. But yes, um, so very good. So can we talk about what we're doing together this summer? Sure. Oh, I would love to talk about that. That's so a great program. So one of our priorities is keeping kids off the streets. Obviously, during the school year, that's after school programs. But what do kids do during the summer? They need to have summer learning experiences. So they do. all of our after school programs turn into year round, uh, their year round programs. So they offer summer programs. And then we expand. We expanded to, I believe, 12 new additional locations for mm -hmm. summer because we hear a lot from families. They can afford one child to go to you know, summer learning, and that's at 100 bucks a child. But if they have three times eight weeks, you know, it's do expensive. that math, that's, you know, real quick, that's $2,400 for the summer that they may or may not have budgeted for. So we expand in the summer to make sure that camps are affordable. And we also make sure that while they're having fun with the kids, they do some type of learning component because particularly kids with uh, lower income households, if they don't get reinforced schooling during the summer, they fall behind their peers mm -hmm. and they never catch up. And then the next summer they fall even further behind. It's called the summer slide. It's, it's, a, uh, it's a national, it's a well-known thing that yeah. if you don't reinforce education in the summer, they're just gonna fall further and further behind. So all of our programs that they work with elementary uh, through eighth grade have to have either math or literacy and then for eighth grade and older there has to be some type of career exploration. Okay, very good. I mean even me, I haven't done algebra in many many years and I have slid. 
So yeah, yeah you got so you, you, you have to you into exercise a camp. that. Yeah. Well, well, I could probably use a camp. Yeah, for. yeah. And they and they don't do it. I would just make it clear if anyone's looking for a summer camp and I know they're all filling up really fast. It's not like they go to school. They no. they embed it with fun activities to make sure that they're getting learning in there. They're not just sitting in a classroom cuz no no child wants to do that in the summer. Yeah. Speaking of fun activities. Exactly. That's my segue. So uh, I stole it. So anybody that ha ever uh, participate in a summer camp, the really fun part of it is when you do that field trip. Mm -hmm. And so a few years ago, we would get all these applications and they would want to send kids to Disney and Bush Gardens, Bush Gardens which is sea great World. experience, but we're using local dollars to send kids to another county. We had a little issue with that. I had a huge <laughs> issue with that. And so we approached the chamber to do something called summer passports, yep. which is allowing the kids to explore their own community because we just assume we're a coastal community. We assume kids have been to the beach, they've been on the water, and that is not true. It is absolutely not true. So we started this, I don't know, five or six years ago now. So we have members of the chamber, so local vendors, um, Lisa's Kayaks, we had Sail a Key where they teach them sailing, um, the Children's Museum, even though it's a little out of county. Oxbow. Oxbow you know, actually let's, does a let's, great program. Real quick, the Children's Museum, because I've been working with them. Over half of the kids that go to the Children's Museum are from St. Lucie They county. are, they are. Um, and and uh, Heathcote and Port St. Lucie Botanical lady. Gardens and the Cake Lady. So we worked with them to develop summer programming and um, we work with the Children's Services that provides a grant for us to get our vendors, our members involved and they provide summer summer. Um, activities. Yeah. yeah. They go kayaking, they go sailing, they learn how to make cakes. They, some of them have never been to the beach and some of my vendors now collect um, swimsuits and all kinds of things because a lot of them don't have that. And it has been such a rewarding program for everybody involved. It's keeping our, the money in town, right? Which, cause we know it circulates three more times when you keep it in town. It's keeping our local vendors, you know, kind of above board during the summer, which is typically slow for them. And then um, it's giving kids experiences that they typically would never ever have. I'll never forget uh, a program director. This was like year two that we did it. Uh, I think they went to the sailboat one. Sail a key. Sail yeah. a key. And he came back. He called me actually when they were en route back. He said, he said, Sean, I just want to let you know this was life changing for these kids because they had never been east of US one much less on the water and had that opportunity. And it's just an amazing experience. And, you know, we always talk about how the Children's Services Council is an economic driver too, right? We it is. provide over 420 jobs in St. Lucie County through our resources, mm -hmm. and we provide supports for working families. But this is an economic driver for all those vendors as well. It is, it is. Some of my vendors, the Cake Lady, Lisa's Kayaks, they really count on this program now to um, keep them going during the slow months of the summer. Because we don't have any tourism during then, right? Like, right. who's kayaking on a Tuesday when all the snowbirds are at home? Our summer camps. Yeah, that's exactly <laughs> it. So it's a program that we're very proud of, and we've had to increase the funding year after year after year. And I've already gotten the calls. Um, we do a vendor fair. I've already gotten the calls from many of them that they've already capped out on their funds. And I'm like, we haven't even started yet. School's not out yet. But the camps have now grown to understand it. We're providing transportation. And so they're able to take advantage of all of the activities, and they are taking advantage of all the activities. So, yeah. So the other thing that we're partnering with, and I know it's happening this Friday, but it's oh, good yeah. for everybody to know. That we did it? Yeah, that okay. we did it, the swing, swing into reading. So we're partnering with you and the St. Lucie Mets to open the baseball game for all children and their accompanying parent or caregiver. Yep. And we're going to give away books. I love that program, too. So it's schools out, you know, for the summer, and we call it swing into reading, and any any student, K through 12, and an accompanying adult gets free tickets. To and so I, I say all that because, you know, so I always joke at some point, I feel like our office is the Amazon distribution warehouse for books. It, it looks like Because, you know, we're going to get, you know, John will be like, hey, there's six pallets coming in. Yeah. We're a small office. We only have 10 and a half staff. So we're like, oh, great. We're all going to unload pallets today. Uh, but uh, I say all that to say that we, we purchase books, but we also re uh, rely on donations. Yep. And and I was fortunate today. I walked in and, and they... they uh, a member of your audience donated books for that Aww, effort. So we're going to yeah. make sure that those are distributed they this Friday. Every month. They're I lovely. Know. Yes. Yeah, and we do need more books, you know, because we, we are going to give so many of them out. We gave so many of them out at yes. Swing into Reading because it didn't rain. The yeah. weather was I, I beautiful. I like how you're uh, yeah, I'm putting projecting. That out there, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, 
we can't do questions because we don't have a, a mic to go out. So we'll okay. we'll take that question during the break and then okay. we'll answer it. But we're going to take a break because I'm going to come back with the mayor and um, we're going to continue on with what's going on in this beautiful city. Thank you for having us. All right. Thank you for being with us, Sean. And I appreciate it. And uh, we'll be right back, everybody. Welcome back to Coffee with the Port St. Lucie Council. I am Teresa Aronson, and I'm here now. I'm joined by the reason why we're all here, the one, the only mayor of this beautiful city, Mayor Shannon Martin. Welcome. Good morning. How are you? I'm good. It's always nice to be with you here. I feel Me like we've, we've got a good routine of, I think I have you at least quarterly now, if I'm Probably. not mistaken, which I like. Yeah. Very good. I, and I, I think we get a big bigger crowd no, no offense to the other council people but when we get the mayor here i think we get a little bit of a bigger crowd and we definitely did today awesome so what is going on in the city what do you what does everybody nothing, need to know about nothing's going no, on in i the know city of nothing Port is Lucy. ever going on <laughs> so. right this is the slowest growing city in all of mm -hmm, america mm -hmm. nothing's happening uh super busy many many things happening um, most recently, uh, the council, em we embarked on our yearly three-day strategic planning session mm -hmm. where we took a look and uh, all of our feedback that we get from our residents, from our national community survey, our online survey, our citizen summit, and staff packages, all that together, and we try to figure out what our priorities are going forward for the next year, the next several years, and so um, we, and like I said, we embarked on that. Um, talked about several projects, talked about restructuring our strategic plan a little bit. Oh, okay. Um, there's one goal specifically called Vibrant Neighborhoods, and we're trying to define now in 2024 what that really means, and so I think we're going to be uh, what refocusing that on that. Well, you know, it, it, it started... Does um, it mean pickleball in every neighborhood? <laughs> yeah. I thought so. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> um, Basically, back uh, several years ago, we had this conflict of, you know, we have so many gated communities, beautiful communities mm -hmm. in the city, but then our, our uh, neighbor, regular neighborhoods that don't, aren't gated, it was kind of like, well, they didn't have any identity. Oh, right? yes. So we started our neighborhood engagement and improvement we program. We named them all. Our nice program. Yep. Community engagement program. And, and we, so you we and named I both all live our neighborhoods. In Woodland right? Hills. Woodland Trails. Oh, I was so close. <laughs> I live in Woodland Trails, too. I know. Um, and uh, so we named all our neighborhoods. We gave our, our, our neighborhoods some identity, our citizens some identity of where they live. Yep. Um, and so have um, several projects going on um, and community programs, getting out into the neighborhoods. Um, so, but we've determined that we need to change that a little bit because we're not having as much participation. Mm. Uh, we have a community engagement manager now through communications. So we're trying to revamp that and take a look at um, what we want that to look like. Um, of course, always the focus of safe, clean, and beautiful being yeah. number one priority since we are the safest city, second in the nation, safest. Want to continue that. Of, of our course. size, yeah. Want to make sure that we're a clean and beautiful city as well. That's, that's our brand, right? That's what we're known to be, safe, clean, and beautiful. So we want to make sure that continues and how we can work on things to continue that prioritization. Um, it's tough, right? Because um, I think it, one thing is, is we have typically been a, um, you know, a, a neighborhood city or a um, resident city, right? And so we are not getting the community engagement, but we're fairly safe because people come here to get away from the bigger cities. So, right. so it's sort of like you can have one or the other in full force, but it's hard to get both. So. Right, and we've it's an been, uphill battle. Well, we've been the safest city for the last 13 years, and we want to make sure that we're continuing that um, through the work that our PD does with their uh, stratified policing model and how they address community policing, but also how our residents also engage. Um, mm -hmm. And we're, we have a great, very supportive community. We all work together, so we want to keep that up. Also, making sure we're addressing our infrastructure needs, obviously. We all know that traffic is the number one issue. And so we have a very robust mobility plan in place to deal with so many upcoming projects that are in various stages. But of course, it takes a lot of planning. It takes design, which takes a lot of time. It takes funding and leveraging all of our resources that we have, whether it be city funds, state funds, federal funds. 
Um, and so we're constantly bonds, working on that. Yeah. I feel like we're going to be talking about infrastructure and road improvement till, I don't know, till, we'll be, till we're long gone. Yes. We'll be talking about that forever. And yeah. it'll, it'll Do you continue. think we'll be talking about Port St. Lucie Boulevard forever too? <sighs> I knew, did you have to bring that up? <laughs> Yes, I that project, like I've are. mentioned it before, but that project. Every month we talk about it. It's the bane of my existence. Mine um, too. Uh, yes. Uh, and the chlorphanes, they have to drive it every day. I know, I've heard it from them. Um, yes, yeah, so obviously that's a DOT controlled project. Um, that has taken much longer than anticipated. It was supposed to be done in December. It's still not done. It's supposed to be done by June. It's looking now like fall. I don't like I it. I know, it's a bad thing. I have other words that I can use, but oh, I, I won't say them here. I'm preaching to the prior, uh -huh. choir because I know you, you yeah. hate it as much as we I all do. I do hate it. Um, but then I keep thinking, well, if we talk about it, maybe we can get its completion into existence. Maybe if we all go put on some hard hats and go work out there together, that could get... I'm about to. <laughs> but, uh, I know. So um, we're pushing... Uh, as much as we can through DLT. I but, know. But, you know, they, it's, it's, it's just got to get control done. It's their control. Their control. There's not a lot we can do. No. But uh, other than um, strong, strong suggestions to please never use this contractor again. Because it's, uh, but I will say. I don't say, know how this contractor hasn't gone break, bankrupt, though. Well, I don't know either. Um, because we are in the penalty phase for full disclosure. And um, they are getting charged thirty-seven hundred dollars a day for every day that it takes them to complete the project. And we're like coming up on a year. Well, it's supposed to be done December, so we're at say, almost at the six-month mark. It was Ugh. supposed to be done in December of twenty twenty-three. So, but uh, but we have lots of other projects happening. As you know, Flores is continuing. That's that's underway. Yeah. Um, we are looking at intersections, uh, designing intersections um, to address capacity issues. Savona Gatlin is one. Um, what are we doing at Gatlin? There's going to be uh, intersection changes there, adding a turn lane. Oh, okay, turn lanes um, and stuff. Okay, adding perfect. turn lanes, and then we're not even just looking at that specific intersection. We're going to uh, expand it a little bit um, to, on the approach Gatlin to the intersection. Gatlin and yeah. Uh, well, that Gatlin and Gatlin Savona. Um, we just had a council meeting yesterday talking about um, tradition and Village Parkway because oh. of the high amounts of traffic. We have 24,000 cars a day. Uh, going through that intersection and improvements that need to be made, not only from a vehicle uh, perspective, but a pedestrian and bicyclist safety perspective as well. Um, yeah, it's I, crazy town out there. So the list that we have for infrastructure projects is a mile long, and it, we're just going to continue to work on it, going into design um, for, uh, obviously, for Kashmir. I mean, yeah. I'm sorry, California. and um, Not Kashmir? Well, Kashmir is on the list too, but right now we're on California. Okay, I was going to um, say. So there's, and South Bend, Bayshore, I mean, St. Lucie West so Boulevard. All the roads. All the roads. All, all of our major the main arterials. arterial right. roads. Right. Did we get our second turn lane at the, um, where's, wait, did we get our second turn lane open? I thought we did. I, yeah. So we talked about it on our show and we wished that into existence, but we got our second turn lane at Becker and um, Village Parkway. Yes. So we're excited about that. And then we just did a turn lane at Tradition Parkway going um, north onto um, on Village, Village Parkway. Yep. Yeah. Village yep. Parkway. Yep. So they still need something at <coughs> Del Webb, though, because that is it. That is like a football field of exit that you got to get across there. Yeah. Yeah, so I'm sure that'll come. But yeah. we got the we got the second turn lane open, which was was yeah. something good. So lots of lots of projects in the hopper there, and um, so good. But you know, and then looking at other priorities based on what our citizens have they have wanted. You know, talking about arts and culture, and how we can address that. Um, Does that bring us to the port? Yes. Yay! And so, the most exciting project that's almost complete is of course our Pioneer Park at the port. Mm -hmm. It's gonna be open on June 15th. We're gonna have a huge grand opening celebration. It's gonna be amazing. We have the Whalers performing oh. from Bob Marley and the Whalers. Nice. Um, we're gonna have lots of activities going on that day. I like that vibe. The Whalers will be performing in the evening around six o'clock. Uh, very, very happy that our historic lodge is finally finished rent being renovated. And we turned it over to our amazing historical society so they can 
get working on that project and yep, get the, the museum. get the museum up and running so that it's open in time for our grand opening celebration. Yep. So, and then uh, not too far off, we'll get uh, start working on the historic home, the Peacock House. So that's, that's Good. in progress right now. And we right do now. have a vendor for um, refreshments or no? Yeah. For, for, the, for the park. Oh, you mean for the, the restaurant? Yeah. Yeah, so the restaurant, um, we partnered with P3 Investments on the restaurant. Okay. The city was required to uh, provide a pad-ready site, which we have, and so um, they'll probably start late summer Good. on the construction of the restaurant. The restaurant will be a, um, have a rooftop bar on the top of it overlooking the St. Lucie River. There's going to be a food garden in the back with little food vendors, um, like a pizza place or a bakery. There's going to be a tiki bar. Love it. Right on the edge of the river there. Um, the kayak and canoe launch will be open. There's, Very good. That we're putting in. Our boardwalk, obviously, is being worked on now under the bridge. Yes. And so that entire extension will be complete. And um, I had a quick tour a couple weeks ago. It is absolutely beautiful. The vision is coming to life. I'm going to go out in next week, I believe it is, or the first week in June. I'm going to do a little sneak peek video and mm. put it on our social media to give everybody a snapshot or a little video of what's coming. Nice. To get everybody excited about it. So Good. That I will be, be there on June 15th. Yeah, I hope everyone comes. It's going to be an amazing celebration. Um, but for that day, because of the anticipated attendance levels, there's not going to be any parking on site that day. You have to go to Mid Florida Event Center. We have giant motor coaches oh, wow. that are going to be picking everybody up and bringing them to the site and dropping everybody off um, because we expect there to be thousands upon thousands of people. Maybe I won't be there that day. <laughs> that doesn't sound great. Can you come by boat yet? Um, not that day, but yes, you will be able to come okay. by boat after the fact. I'll come yes. the 16th. Okay. All right, good. No, you have to be there that day. This no. is like one of our biggest Wait. things. Oh, yes. I, I'm on the Historical Thank you, Society Patricia. board, and the Thank chair you. just said I'll be there the 15th. You'll be there. Okay. All right. You have to be there. I'll You're be at there. everything else. There's no excuse. I feel like it, right? Am I overexposed? Yes, you're overexposed. <laughs> I feel so, like it. Uh, uh, another, uh, another thing, recently I traveled to uh, Washington, D.C. for mm -hmm. our federal advocacy on behalf of the city. Met with the National Endowment of the Arts, uh, Department of Transportation, Department of Justice, um, the Department of Forestry and Agriculture. Uh, we did get a million dollar grant for trees recently um, from mm -hmm. that department. Um, we often get grants from DOJ, um, learning from the National Endowment of the Arts, all of the grant opportunities that are coming forward that we will be able to apply for, especially since our citizens are asking for more arts and culture. And so we received over... That sounds interesting, actually, that trip. It was. It, I'm going to tell you, um, it was one of the best trips. And usually when you go to Tallahassee, <clears throat> and I love our delegation... But they, ha they see so many people at one time because of the committee weeks and then yes. when you're in session that you're kind of in and out in 10, 15 minutes. 10, 15 and you, minutes? And you don't Boy, really you... get the time. That's a lot. But being in D.C., um, literally 30 to 45 minutes with the agencies. And I got to tell you, it was great to see Congressman Mass there. Mm. Always welcomes us with open arms. And I got to give him props. And Angel Robertson from yes. his office is with yes, us. Yes, Angel's here. Yep. But let me tell you, um, he has been so supportive of our city. Good. And he gets a certain number of appropriations. So, of course, we went in and we had four appropriations for him. And I know he gets like 100 and he only gets to choose like 15. And we sat and talked with him for a good half an hour. And he put all four of our city appropriations in. Good. So. Many, now, many he things. has an office here, and you had to go to D.C. No, I mean, I could call. Well, one thing is, just like our, our state delegation, if you call Congressman Mass, he answers the phone. Yeah. And, and I, I know a lot of Congress people do that. Right. But he will answer the phone. But sometimes it's nice to go see him in, in, in D.C. and to be able to sit down and have that conversation. Um, and I was there for other issues as well, so of course I'm going to go see him. 
Yeah, and I also think it's an obligation that we have as his community to Absolutely. show that. Because that's the same thing with Tallahassee. Because you're right, if you get 10, 15 minutes, that's like a marathon with these legislators when you go for um, yeah. legislative weeks. But you have to show your face <laughs> and you have to show the other um, delegates that you are behind your representation and you are expecting results from your representation. Yeah. So I always consider it an obligation. It's a political obligation that we can't get out of. You got to go and you got to go see them where they work. Yeah, but it's also a good learning opportunity because when you have that half an hour, 45 minutes, you get to, to learn about other things that you might not have known about or that mm -hmm. our staff doesn't know about because there are so many programs or so many op grant opportunities. It's when you have a small staff that handles it, it's hard to know what they all are. Yeah. But then they provide that information. And not only that, but I will say that for everything that they said that they would provide as far as links and information, within 15 minutes of us leaving every meeting, all of that information was being sent in our emails. Very nice. And I was pretty impressed by that because I figured, oh, it would be, you know, oh, we'll send you the information, we'll send it, to, and then we'll get it like a week or two later. No, literally within 15 minutes we had it all. So that was great. Good. And it provides an opportunity to keep working on things. So uh, another thing, finally, finally, construction agreement approved for Tradition Regional Park. Okay, good. Um, that's our partnership with yep. Mad Me. The earthwork was being done, but we finally got the construction agreement done at our last council meeting. Um, one of the promises that we made when we decided to um, not do the full adventure park because of the cost and the maintenance and the operation that would be, we promised that we'd do some type of BMX um, facility in one of our parks and a skate park in another one of our parks. Okay. That was our promise to the citizens that we weren't forgetting that alternative type of recreation. Uh, we partnered with uh, USA BMX uh, for <clears throat> excuse me, um, BMX Park, and what they came back with is a very unique, it's called an adaptive wheel park, and not only will it be for BMXing, it'll be for skateboarding, it'll be for rollerblading, it'll be mm. for RC cars, for the RC clubs that want to do the, the remote oh, control I love it. clubs. Yeah, those are great. So anything on wheels that's uh, non-motorized, except for the little battery R R yeah, yeah, RCs, yeah, battery operated. Uh, you'll be able to, the citizens will be able to utilize, and it'll be a partnership for operations where there will be public use, but then uh, USA BMX will also operate for some types of tournaments and things like that. Um, but the design came through. It was amazing. It was more than I expected, so we're really excited about that. It's going to be the first of its kind in this entire region. Oh, wow. Um, so, and they do many of them throughout the United States, so that was exciting. That is exciting. Yeah, we're going to do the groundbreaking for a tradition regional probably sometime later this summer. Uh, and then construction will start, and we'll have another park open next year. So we, I mean, just in this past year, we've got this coming in with the BMX aspect of it, and um, which are which are resources we don't typically have. We have one of, I think, just two pickleball, indoor pickleball clubs yes. that is finishing up in St. Lucie West. And yep. then we, we got a Dave & Buster's. <clears throat> yes, that's opening soon, too. They got their, actually, I got an email this morning that they got their CO today. And these are things that we typically, cities of our size, might not have seen previously. And um, because we are growing so much and because of our location, mm -hmm. we're really getting a lot of great stuff in. So the idea that there's nothing to do in Port St. Lucie is fading exactly. day by day. Yeah, and you know, you have to remember too, when we're comparing ourselves versus other cities, right? So who do we compare ourselves to? Oh, Orlando, Tampa, you know, Fort Lauderdale, West Palm. Well, we're not them yet, that's for sure. Well, we're not them, but, and, and we're not gonna be them because we're, we're unique. Their size is twice ours. Well, in some cases, three and four times ours. Well, it's, not, it's an, it, yeah, in terms of some the population and things like that, but. Density. But also, these cities are a lot older than us. Mm -hmm. We are still 63 years young as a city. Mm -hmm. And we're not fully built out. We're all, still only 50% built out. So we are still growing Should up. Did you say that to these people? Everybody just groaned. Uh, well, uh, hey, we I, I understand. Them. I understand it. But, uh, but I'm always going to give you the truth and Ugh. the reality of it. Uh, you know, the facts are the facts. I know. And we have to deal with it. I don't know if they're it. ready for them, though, because it's early. We have to deal with it. We have to manage it. We have to balance it. That's our role here yeah. um, because it, it, it's, that's what it is. Uh, and we have to accept it. But um, we, it's, it's really difficult because you're always comparing. Everyone is always comparing us to everywhere else, right? Yeah. And it's very difficult to do that. Grass because isn't always we're greener. Uni very unique. We are. Right? We are. We're 84% residential single-family homes. 
Not a we lot were of a other bedroom cities community like that. that just grew and grew That's and right. grew and grew. And we're trying to shift. We're shifting that yep. and we're changing and um, we're going to continue to change. That's that's what's going to continue to happen. And we're going to. But the good thing about it is that you have to adapt to the changes and we're all adaptable. Right. You have to be adaptable. To, mm. Well, you have to be. <laughs> you know what? I have to as be. I age. I feel like less and less, but I'm, I'm working on it. Yeah. But okay. you have to be, especially when all these things are happening. You have to, yeah. you have to, you know. Balance. I don't have a choice. You don't have a choice. Right. We don't have a choice. It's, yeah. It is what it is. We have to continue to move forward. And that's the most positive thing that we can do. So, But then um, also Torino Regional Park, um, the conceptual plan should be coming forward to us uh, soon. There was, it was going to be on the agenda, but uh, I had a bunch of questions and I asked that it be pulled so I could get some questions answered. Okay. Um, and I asked for the council to have one-on-ones to circle back before we have the discussion. So that'll be coming forward uh, soon. We also had a uh, conceptual plan done for the future of McCarty Ranch. Our residents have said that, of course, pa passive recreation is something that's very important. More hiking, more trails, you know, more nature opportunity stuff. for nature. So yeah. we're, we're addressing that in McCarty Ranch. And making you can sure. still frisbee golf there, though, right? Yes, disc golf, frisbee golf. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yes. Yeah. That's, that's not changing. So, but again, lots of infrastructure, lots of park projects. Okay. Um, lots of things going on. Our, um, in budget season right now, our Oosh. city manager is meeting with um, all the departments, figuring out what that's going to look like, what he could present to us for his budget uh, this summer at our summer workshop. So many things. Good. All good stuff for the most part, yeah. Yes. Yeah. All right, good. We'll also have to keep us very busy. Is there anything else you want to talk before we move to questions? No, let's go to questions. All right, well, we're going to take a break because, as you know, we don't do questions on camera here. We don't have the mic, the availability. This is not, you know, a million-dollar production show. I see a lot of phones <laughs> on tripods as we speak. Yes. So um, we, are not, we don't have the ability to do questions in the audience on camera. So I want to remind everybody that this is a free event. It's open to the public. We do it every third Tuesday at 8.15, 8.30-ish. Um, right here at the community center on Orosa across from City Hall. If you'd like to ask your questions, come on down. We, we encourage you to do that. It was a full house today, and again, we feed you. And um, I want to thank Steamworks Coffee Bar for providing always the best coffee in town, the best fresh um, home blended brews in town and they've got a, a brick and mortar right there on us one and i want to thank the children's services council for being our sponsor i appreciate that and he gave us a lot of great information today and of course your crew here at the at the city and of course my crew at the chamber yep thanks everyone for coming yeah thank you for coming we're going to take a break and then we're going to do questions with all of you have a great day everybody